is Gatsby with Tape, and you join me at the Space Center for a brand new series. This is the Elu Base series, the series in which I put a base on Elu, if you haven't figured it already. And today I'm launching four probes out to Elu, um, two orbital probes and a couple of landers, which are on this, obviously, this launch vehicle that you see right now. Um, now Elu presents, obviously, a few tasks and problems, in that it's quite, well, really far away, and, um, and on a different uh, plane, it's got a, a 6.2 degree inclination relative to Kerbin, I think, or something like that. Um, so there's quite a lot of delta V to get out there. And you just probably noticed there's a Keythane map on my uh, screen. I won't be using Keythane in this series. This will be a completely stock series. Which, um, because uh, it, it makes me try harder to think of interesting things to do um, when I'm using stock, and a lot of people do very good series not involving stock, like uh, Scott Manley does loads, but uh, and Keything doesn't really like my computer that much, or the other way around, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, anyway, I've just decided not to use it, so yeah. Um, but anyway, as I was saying, there is obviously quite a lot of Delta V um, to get out to uh, ELU, and that's why I've used a fairly large um, launch vehicle just for launching a few probes. I wanted to use a smaller one, but it didn't work out so well. Um, so I'm using this, uh, which is pretty good, and I probably could have made it smaller if I'd used a nuclear engine on the transfer stage, but, um, well, I wanted to use an LVT-45, which is the 200 kilonewton engine, just just for convenience, I suppose, um, because it'll make it, uh, the burns faster. And, uh, I mean, the Elu missions to Elu take long enough without um, ridiculous burns. But uh, I am looking forward to this series. I mean, not a huge amount of people have done uh, this sort of thing, I don't think. Anyway, um, right now I am using a tiny bit of the transfer stage um, for my Kerbin orbit, which I really didn't want to do, but I had to. Uh, because obviously you need a fairly good orbit for getting out to Elu. Well, for getting anywhere. Um, and I put it at 76,000 so I don't dip back in the atmosphere by accident um, if I burn downwards or something. But anyway, I've just skipped um, making the uh, finding the encounter, and that's all planned as you can see on the screen. And now I'm just going to carry it out. This is all at um, four times time accelerate and post commentary, obviously. Um, but I have cut bits out which don't need to be seen, like all of that planning, uh, because that was kind of a bit yeah, tedious and long and boring even at four times time accelerate and some of the warping out to ELU because it takes ages even at four times time accelerate because it's like I think about 400 because this is a high energy transfer because well it had to be and this was fairly inefficient because I had to dodge Joule because it was coming in at the same time which was really annoying because this is the same save I've been using a while um, the one I used for Project Juna so there is uh, still a bunch of stuff orbiting Juna and it just so happened Joule was coming in fairly similar times so, I did a smaller burn now and a larger correction later, which ultimately cost a lot, as you saw there. And um, now I'm just going to get the. Oh, yeah. Now I'm planning the orbital changes, which will be skipped. And now you see me fine tuning it around Elu. Um, this is Conic. Pa ha. I'm going to start again. That was uh, This is Conic Patch Mode 0, which is why um, you see the orbital indicator around the planet you're going to rather than along your course. It just makes it easier to fine-tune, which is... Uh, I just quite like it. You can change it in the settings.cfig file or something. I'm sure you can just Google it. Um, but anyway, I'm just aligning my uh, craft, and I will be coming up to it, uh, up to the um, correction soon, you know. And at this point I was kind of, you know, a bit worried about fuel, because I'd done an 1800 delta V burn already, and I only have one and a bit tank. And I do use a bit of the um, probe fuel for getting to Elu, but it works out fine. And you can see as I'm drifting away, the Sol, the Sol, no, what's it called? Kerbal, or the Sun, gets um, yeah, it gets quite a lot smaller. Why did I say Sol? What is the Sol? It's a type of beer, or, or a day on Mars. I, I, I don't know. It just sounds a lot like Sun, but anyway. Um, yeah, so now I've come up to the yeah, to the direction, and that went very quickly. Even at one time, it was pretty quick. But now I'm just doing the last bit fairly um, slowly so that I get it right. And it doesn't really matter about how much time it takes me because uh, you have so much time while going to Elu or going to any planet. And now you can see 
laconic patch mode zero again how um i'm fine tuning around the planet and it makes it really easy to see exactly what's going to happen and now i'm just figuring out how to uh, fine tune it manually um and then i realize i'm probably going to need to use these tiny little probe engines instead of uh, the main one so that i can just kind of um fine-tune this much quicker and I have left all this in just to kind of illustrate how difficult it is with the physics engine because the physics engine's a bit jittery for lack of a better word because it's quite complicated so it's never quite sure where you're gonna be so you can see it just starts going insane when I'm especially when I'm turning um, it has no idea where I'm going to be it's just kind of guessing so I'm adjusting my uh, inclination and my heading just trying to get a fairly um, equatorial orbit that goes around the same way that ELU rotates and around the equator roughly but um I mean there's only only something you can do you'd get less of this kind of jittering if you were going to like Juno or something I think because um smaller burns and smaller distances and things and that was me just making sure that it does uh, rotate the way I thought and uh how long does this go on? okay it's almost I'm almost done um so I think I make one final burn now um Nope, made a liar out of myself. Now this is the final burn until I get it roughly where I need it to be. Yeah, about there, and I adjust it later. Um, but yeah, anyway, now I'm going to cut this out because, uh, well, yeah, you see, I'll just cut that out because it took ages to warp out there, even at a hundred thousand times time accelerate. I just kind of sat there a while and played some guitar or something, rather than uh, actually watching it. Uh, but anyway, now I'm figuring out how much. Delta V it's going to take and it's about 1800 again which is kind of annoying so I am um, I'm trying to get a maneuver node to try estimate so I can pull myself closer to the uh, planet with my periaps closer to the planet but then just do it manually because I can't get a maneuver node because my future path and the path I'm on intersect which is kind of annoying um hmm yeah so that's 61,000 I just use those probe engines again and then um and just pulling the orbit in with the maneuver node. Um, oh yeah, now shutting down the tiny engines and uh, switching back to the big engine and all the fuel so that I don't just use up all my probe fuel. That'd be really bad. And I think it's about to be cut. Yeah, now it's um, just going to flick weirdly and my maneuver node's going to disappear because um, what didn't happen, uh, what definitely didn't happen was I warped past the planet and um, and had to reload. That wasn't a thing. But anyway, let's just warp to the planet now and not warp past it, because I wouldn't make that mistake. Um, that was weird. There was just a thought in my head that's like, oh my god, what if I smashed the solar panels on the planet as if I'd just like come past and just grazed it a bit? That'd be ridiculous. That'd be called litho-breaking. Maybe. Anyway, now I'm just circularizing and losing that fuel and ditching that little bit of the rig. I do quite like this. Um, Look at the whole craft, it looks kind of okay. But then I decide I'll turn on all the engines just so I get a little bit more kick. Um, I have the engines, I might, might as well utilize them. And look at that, just destroying all my my scientific equipment with fuel. So I don't bring any scientific equipment because this is sandbox, because a series like this would be hard but interesting to do in career mode. But um, I don't know, I, I prefer doing series in sandbox. Anyway, that's circularized around um, ELU, and not per perfect, but uh, I mean, this is just the rig. The main, the actual probes will go into their own orbits. And now I'm just moving fuel around, um, so that I can, yeah, well, because the landers are going to need more fuel because you know they have to land, and landing, yeah, it can be difficult. But anyway, that's pretty much done. And now we're going to send out our first orbital probe, and I'm going to put it into a, a more inclined orbit, so that I can take a look at more of ELU. I mean, I do most of my surveying off screen because I was just kind of looking over the planet a bit. Um, nothing actually that interesting, uh, but I like ELU uh, the place, and it'll be much more interesting once I've populated it with multiple bases. Um, anyway, and there's a nice little crater down there that I was thinking of landing in, but then it moved into the dark side, so I think I choose like uh, one of the little valleys to land next to, because it could be quite good to land next to a valley, because, um, well, there's a nice balance of um, dirt and 
snow so that I can kind of survey all of it, I suppose, is what I would do in real life, but I'm just going to land there, because why not? Um, so yeah, just warping into position, losing sight of the sun, or Kerbal. Well, it's actually labelled the sun in the game, so I'm just going to call it that. Uh, yeah, so oh, I overshot there, because um, I kind of underestimated the power to weight ratio. Uh, I think that's Lays in the background, you can just see there. Um, unless Elu has a moon I don't know about. I don't think it does, no. That'd be that'd be embarrassing. Just set up a whole base and look up like, well, I will be a son of a bitch, there is a moon. And my screens have just switched off as I was rambling, because after ten minutes, um, or thereabouts, they decide that they'll go into sleep mode if I haven't used them. And I am just staring at the screen talking, rather than, you know, playing the game. Um, but anyway, now I've, well, yeah, you just saw the probes coming down, and, uh, and oh yeah, now I'm ra raising it up a little bit, a little too much, I keep overshooting with this, because, um, well, because it has a pretty good power to weight ratio, and I just want to land just on the edge of that, um, no, there isn't actually that much dirt there, but I do land in the dirt with the next probe, um, or do I? Keep watching to find out. Yeah, no, I do. Um, I say um a lot. I should know more about what I'm saying. But anyway, I'm just pulling it into land. I oh, undershoot a little bit. I don't land exactly where I want to be, but yeah, it's, you know, near enough. And that's how science is done, kids. Near enough. And look, there, it's just standing by itself on one leg, because the SAS controls are actually pretty good um, now, so you know. They can st they they hold it on the one leg by itself, and now to send out the other probe into a more equatorial orbit, um, because something's happening downstairs. I'm sure no one's being killed. That'd be really bad if someone was, and then it'd be like, ah, oh, wish I hadn't said that. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, that's fairly equatorial. Now I look at it, now it's not that equatorial actually. Um, it's near enough. And then I switched to this after much surveying and much not just doing nothing. And, um, what was I going to say? I, I felt like I was going to say something, but, um, I don't know, it slipped my mind. But anyway, I'm, I've got a plan for landing in the dirt with this probe, so I get a good kind of view of everything. Um, yeah, so I'm just bringing that down to a little above the surface. I'm not sure where sea level would be on Elu because it's. Oh, and it's paused, and I forgot to cut that out of the video. Don't know how that long that'll go on, but, um, as I was saying, Elu is mostly comprised of ice, and I'm pretty sure it's ice, because it probably wouldn't evaporate, because it probably has high enough gravity, because, like, Minmus isn't ice, because, um, the gravity is too low, um, and it would just evaporate. Oh, there you go, it's unpaused. So I assume that's ice and mud. So I will be landing in the snow. It's kind of, uh, like Hoth, I suppose, if you like Star Wars. <clears throat> and if you don't, then actually, I, I'm, I'm not going to call you a heathen. That's a little far, but um, <laughs> but bro, what the hell? Now I'm just skipping over this crater, um, and obviously landing in the dirt over there, and burning upward so I avoid the ridge. Yeah, so I'm coming down, and Elu doesn't have an atmosphere at all. Which in real life it would probably have a little bit of an atmosphere, like tenuous. I mean, even the moon has a slight atmosphere. But, um, you know, yeah, Elu doesn't. Clearly. Actually, not clearly. I've never sent any apparatus out here. I don't fully know that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a game, so we can assume it has no atmosphere. Anyway, pulling down and landing nicely in the dirt. And that is me down. Um, so this has been the first episode. In future episodes, I will be putting a base around here, hopefully putting stations around here, if I have the Delta V required. Maybe doing a few things around Kerbin to make it easier. And generally having a fun series. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like this video, feel free to like this video or leave me a comment. And maybe subscribe if you want to see more of this and other things in the future. This has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.